let's talk about baby bunnies. by the homestead my name is Sarah from Living Traditions Homestead and today is all about baby bunnies uh, we have a lot to talk about we had a litter born a few days ago and I wanted an opportunity to show you about the babies and talk to you about raising baby bunnies um, baby bunnies are called kits um, I don't normally use that term I just think they're cute and call them baby bunnies but that's the official word is kits um, and uh, I just want a chance to um, I want to show you baby bunnies and I want to talk to you about moms and I want to talk to you about raising them so um, the first thing I want to talk to you about is um, you know I talked uh, to you about in the nesting you know when we talked about nesting boxes and stuff like that um, I talked to you about the gestation period being about 28 to 31 or 32 days um, so that is what you can expect um, and when sh when the mom is building the nest something I forgot to tell you about is that just before she starts having the babies she starts pulling fur from her body uh, you can see her um, she she pulls it from her chest and she adds that to the nest of hay or whatever kind of nesting material you, you put in there and that will happen probably a few hours just a few hours before she starts having babies um, in my experience, rabbits will most likely have their babies overnight. They feel very safe then. Um, but to be honest, I have one rabbit that will have her babies during the middle of the day, so you just never know. Um, I check for babies every morning. Uh, when I know that I have a doe that's going to be having babies, I check her nesting box every single morning. Now, just, it, just because there is fur in her nest doesn't mean there are babies in there. Um, but you can look for movement, you can look for some blood maybe on the cage around. Um, but I suggest that, um, that you look carefully and look for movement. Now, when your, when your doe is young and when she hasn't had a lot of babies yet, when she haven't, hasn't had a lot of litters to take care of, she's going to be pretty nervous about you going into her nest and looking at her babies. Um, so when I have a new doe and I know that she has new babies, a lot of times I will wait 24 hours before I mess with her babies. Um, but it's important for you to check on them at least uh, 24 hours after she's given birth. You want to count those babies so that you have record of them. You want to take a look at them and see if they're healthy. Um, you want to make sure that she had those babies in the right place. And we'll get to, um, I'll talk to you about some, some problems and how to kind of remedy that um, a little bit later. But uh, going back to nervous moms, um, it's important for you to check on these babies. So what I do to distract the moms is when I'm gonna check on the babies, I take them something that they really want to eat. I will pull a bunch of uh, fresh grass and a bunch of different things that I know that they like to eat. Uh, I will put that in the cage with them and get them preoccupied and occupied and then I will take the nesting box out completely. Um, and then I'll start looking at the babies. Um, and I want to give you an opportunity to see some of the baby bunnies uh, this mama had seven babies, and within the first 24 hours, one of them passed away. Now, um, there are lots of reasons that babies can die. Uh, right now, it's pretty hot out, um, so they could have it died because of the heat. Um, it may not have been fully developed. It may not have been able to latch on and get a first nursing from its mom. Um, it may just not have been... Uh, energetic enough to find mom. There may have been too much competition. There are just tons of reasons. And the first couple times that happens, it can be kind of devastating. Um, but after a while, you just know that, you know, survival of the fittest. Um, and whatever happens, happens. I, I really don't um, get in the way of nature much when it comes to trying to save babies. 
Uh, whatever is supposed to happen is going to happen, and that's that's just my opinion. I don't normally take out the sickly ones and figure out a way to make them stronger. I just let things happen the way they're supposed to happen. Um, so I, I'd like for you to come in and see these babies come a little bit closer. Uh, they're about three days old, uh, so they're still pretty young. Um, on day one, though, they're going to be without hair. They're all going to be pink if they're white rabbits. Now, uh, New Zealand's aren't all white. People mostly just breed the white ones because it's best for meat raising and for butchering and for sale. Um, but we have some black New Zealands and we've had gray New Zealands and I think there's actually a brown New Zealand. So these babies are three days old. They're pretty squiggly. They're pretty wiggly. Um, and you can see that by three or four days old, they have quite a bit of fur on them. Um, you can also see that their eyes are closed and um, also their, their ears are closed in there. So they're not seeing anything and they're not hearing anything. They can smell, they can feel, that kind of thing. Their eyes and their ears will open up between seven and ten days. That's when they'll start opening up and then they'll become a little bit mo more mobile. So right now, when they feel movement, when they feel things in the nesting box, they're assuming that their mama is coming in to nurse them. Now one thing I want to say before I forget is that you won't see the mama nursing them very much. Um, it's not like goats, it's not like humans. Uh, female rabbits will nurse their entire litter generally twice a day. And you don't really want to mess with that. Um, and they do a pretty good job. The babies fill up really fast. Their bellies get humongous full of that um, milk, but that's all they need. It's been, you know, happening for thousands and thousands of years. Um, but so when you see the mom in the nesting box, leave her alone because she's uh, doing what these babies need. Okay, so I just wanted to give you a chance to see these young babies, see how small they are. Um, and uh, they grow really, really fast. These guys are three days old, like I said. Some other things that you're going to be looking for when you check on them every day. Um, you're, you're gonna want to check and make sure that all of the babies are in the nesting box. Now, they, there comes a time where they become a, a little bit more active. Uh, once their eyes are open, it's, a, it's likely that they're going to either intentionally or accidentally jump out of the box to be with mom, or maybe it was an accident, they were just jumping around and they fell out of the box. Because these moms only nurse two times a day, it's important that if you find them outside of the nesting box that you put them back in. Mom is going to go into the nesting box to feed her babies. And if you ever observe a baby outside of the nesting box, they're going to try to get to mom to nurse because that's just what babies do. And you'll see her um, avoiding them. She'll jump out of the way. She'll jump on top of the nesting, nesting box. So it's not time to feed. Uh, so it's important that these babies have the opportunity to feed every time mom is willing to do so. So. If you're out there in the morning checking on the babies and you see them outside of the nesting box, uh, put them back in. If you're checking on them right before bedtime, which I encourage, especially when it's starting to get cold, they need to be in their nesting box to keep um, warm overnight, uh, put them back in so that they have the opportunity to feed. Um, <clears throat> as they get older, and as you start introducing um, fresh feed and we'll, I'll talk about a lot more about that in a different video but as you're starting to introduce those things their um, their poop is going to change a little bit their bodies are going to have things to get used to that they've never had before they're going to transition from milk to pellets and they're going to be introduced to some fresh feed and with that can cause um, it can cause some diarrhea it can cause what I call sticky butt, and maybe that's because we deal with a lot of poultry. Um, <clears throat> but you're going to want to be aware of whether or not they have some diarrhea and whether or not that gets kind of caked around their bottoms. And that's going to prevent them from going to the bathroom, having a bowel movement. And that's a really serious thing. They'll become impacted and they'll die. Uh, so that's something to be looking for. Um, 
maybe not every day, but every couple days, especially as they start getting older and as they start coming out of the nesting box. Now, the nesting box should stay in with mom and babies until these guys are three weeks old. At three weeks old, you need to pull the nesting box out of the cage uh, from mom. These guys need to, they need to grow up. They need to learn with, to live without a nesting box. And recently, there have been a couple of uh, cases where I have gotten busy and I have not pulled out the nesting box. I didn't realize that they were three weeks old. And I went in and pulled out the nesting box and it, they started using it as, an, as, a, as a litter box. And it was completely filled with um, rabbit poop and urine and stuff. And that is just not uh, the situation that you want for your rabbits. So make sure that when in your record keeping, you mark down when they turn three weeks old and you pull out the nesting box um, and, and, you know, just store it for another time. A couple of things that I want to talk to you about before we go are problems with the actual birth. Um, there are moms, especially first time moms, that they don't really know what they're doing and the first time around they can have a hard time or they can just kind of get it wrong. Um, in some situations the mom may, might have her litter not in the nesting box. She might have them on the wire of her cage instead of in the nesting box. If you find that in the morning, um, you need to do your best to take all those babies on the wire and put them in the nesting box. Um, if they're still living, you need to put them in the nesting box. If they're completely gone, then you just need to remove them and hope for the best uh, for the mom on her next litter. Um, sometimes the mom will just have her litter in the nesting box but in the wrong place. The nest should be in the back of the nesting box here. And the mom who makes a good nest will make a hole back here and then she'll have her babies, she'll be sitting this way with her head toward this way, she'll have her babies and she'll place her babies in her nest. Uh, that's a good mom and that's a good nest and when you come in the morning you'll see the movement way back here under this covered, sp covered part here. But sometimes the moms don't know what they're doing and they'll have the babies at the very front of the nest. Uh, the, in the summer that's not a big deal. But the reason why you want the mamas to have their babies back here in the nest is because it keeps them warm. And most of the time, except in the hot part of the summer, most of the time those babies need to be kept warm and they need to be back here in the nest. So in the morning when you're checking for babies, regardless of the time of year really, if you find that she's had her babies way up here in the front of the nest, you need to take them and put them back in the nest to stay warm for the mom. Mom's just learning and she's just trying to figure it out. Help her out, put her babies back in the, in the nest where they belong. Um, there are some times as well when the mom just makes a terrible nest. And um, I think that the mom can probably get along with a bad nest. Um, I have one that until the very evening that she's going to have her babies, any nesting material you put in there, if it's edible, she eats the nesting material. That's just the way it is. Put more in there, she eats all the hay. And so I watch uh, rabbits like that very closely. And when I see that she's starting to pull her hair, I know that birth is imminent. And then I start putting hay in there for her to make her nest. Uh, but those are all things that you need to just be aware of and just be ready for. Um, and you know what? Sometimes you might lose a whole litter and it is devastating and it sets you back, you know, a month or six weeks. Um, but it, it just kind of happens and moms need to figure it out. And when they screw up entirely on the first um, litter, most of the time they figure it out on the second litter and everything's fine from there on. Let's talk quickly about the cleanliness of the litter box. Now, a lot of people clean their nesting boxes out often. Um, in my opinion, it's gonna depend on the litter size. Now, the litter size is, on average is eight. Eight in a litter. Um, we see anything from five to 11, if you can imagine, 11 babies. In situations when we have 10 or 11 babies, if I have another mom that has given birth within the last 
you know, day or two of a big litter, I will take out one or two of the new litter and put them in the um, nesting box of a different mom who doesn't have so many babies. So there's not so much stress um, on the mom. Uh, but anyway, back to cleaning. So if I have a big litter, um, I will clean out the nesting box at least once within the first three weeks. But sometimes if it's a small litter, if there's only five or six bunnies in there, this nesting box will stay clean enough as far as I'm concerned for the entire three weeks. So if you decide to clean the nesting box, keep in mind that the young babies need their mama's fur in there. So if you're going to take out the nesting material, make sure that you save the mama's fur and then reconstruct a nest in there with a little hole and put mama's fur back in there and put the babies back in there where you found them. The last thing I want to talk to you about is handling the babies, making them at least a little bit tame. Um, it's important for the end result for when you're butchering to have your baby bunnies be a little bit used to being handled by humans. Otherwise, the butchering process is going to be not as easy. Now, we don't need them to be as tame as pets. In fact, it's probably easier for us humans who are gonna butcher these cute rabbits for them not to be so tame that they're like pets. It's important for you or someone in your family to handle the babies um, every day or every couple days. So they get used to what it feels like being handled by human hands. Um, otherwise, um, they're kind of they're they're kind of gonna be kind of freaks at the end. Um, they're gonna scream. They're gonna be very nervous, um, and that whole end process is going to be a lot more frightening for them um, and a lot more difficult for whoever it is that's gonna butcher uh, in on your homestead. Um, and it's it's also fun. They're super cute. Um, and uh, they're fuzzy and soft and fun to be around. Um, so I actually look forward to that part. But I, I know that things kind of get busy and when you've got, you know, five or 10 litters, depending on age and, and where they're at in the growing out process, sometimes that can be hard and it can be overwhelming. So cut yourself some slack if you can't do it as much um, as you think you should. Uh, but you guys, you know, that's it. That's what I think I have for you today about raising rabbit babies. Um, I'm sure glad that you guys are following along on our series, and I'm so glad that you're interested in raising rabbits for your family on your homestead. Um, it's probably the most easy, wonderful, it's inexpensive, um, and you all should try it. If you are nervous at all, just give it a try. One dough and one buck. That's all you need. Get hooked on it because it's really... Um, it's a really wonderful thing for, for your family. So, um, you guys, if you like this video, I would really, really appreciate a thumbs up. I love comments. We're very interactive with our audience. We love uh, talking with you all. Um, and if you haven't subscribed yet, you guys should. We've got so much more to come, and we're so happy to share the knowledge that we have. And as we're learning things, we don't know everything. I don't know everything about rabbits, even though I've been doing this for at least six years now. Um, and if you've got tips to share with us or tips to share with our other, the other people watching the series, you know, please let us know. Use the comment section for all of those things. So until next time, you guys, will you take care and God bless. <laughs> It's important. Thank you guys so much for stopping by the homestead today. We do truly appreciate every one of you for wanting to be part of our lives. Uh, we're now going to be putting out five new videos every week, Monday through Friday. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. Also, don't forget to check out the videos over here on the side. Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you next time back on the homestead. God bless.